Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 296 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Guess who's been a very naughty boy? I'm in the news here. Uh, the headline is Dalai Gag, No Joke by Grace Baldwin. Uh, this is the Herald Sun reporter that was there during the protest, which we will get into. Uh, she ended up uh, storming the venue and coming upstairs to talk to me to do an interview. Let's see how she did. A group of 100 furious Buddhists descended... Well, it was way more than 100. It was like... I reckon close to 200, uh, but they were furious. A group of 100 furious Buddhists descended on a Melbourne pub to protest about a comedian's joke referencing the recent video that showed the Dalai Lama asking a young boy to suck his tongue. I'm going to say it right here, right now. I don't care about the suck my tongue thing. That is a a genuine cultural thing in Tibet. Uh, Maybe it shouldn't be, but it is. I'm upset because he kissed the boy. Everyone, no one keeps, everyone keeps going, oh, how gross is it that that he asked the boy to suck his tongue? Uh, well, nowhere near as gross as kissing the cunt on the mouth. Um, Lewis Spears was the target of their anger as he prepared to perform at the Rubber Chicken Comedy Pub. What a funny name for a venue. In South Melbourne on Tuesday. What was that noise? He recently made the crack about the video scene around the world. Continued on page two. Dude, on front, front page and second page news. Um, Spears was prepping to perform on Tuesday when the 100... 100- 200 members of the Buddhist community arrived in Melbourne uh, and they arrived in a silent protest at the venue. Well, I didn't hear any silence. From the minute I fucking got there, they were chanting, Lewis Spears, not funny. Lewis Spears, not funny. We demand apology. When do we want it? Now. And then they had another one about that that had the Dalai Lama in it, and uh, and it was I think it had the word denigrate in it, and it was let's let's be real, it was way too many syllables for those people whose English was second language. Uh, they they could not do that chant, whatever it was. Uh, so so I'm giving this uh, Herald Sun reporter a pretty bad mark so far. It was more than a hundred, and it was not silent. They held signs, and some were crying. <laughs> Oh, that sucks, man. Organisers also created an open letter to the Melbourne International Comedy Festival organisers calling for Spears to be reprimanded and turfed from the festival lineup. See, this is the thing about the comedy festival that not a lot of people understand is that it's not it's not fucking splendour in the grass where everyone on the lineup gets paid, you know, fucking $20,000 to be there. It's not Coachella. Where, where artists who are headlining get paid a million dollars to to be in the festival. Here's how the comedy festival works: you pay them five hundred bucks and you're in. That's how it works. What was that noise? Five hundred dollars and you're in the festival. If literally you, the person listening to it, had a, had a, had a show called "Fuck the Comedy Festival, Suck My Ass," I'm gay, and that was the show. And you paid five hundred dollars, and you told the festival that you, that you were going to do it in a in a public toilet in Hawthorne. They would let you do it. It's five hundred bucks, and you're in. You don't even need they they don't even check to see if you have a show. You give them five hundred dollars, and they go, bam, you're in the guide. We'll put you on the website. So they can't, and and also they can't kick you out of it unless you unless you do something like horrifically really, really genuinely fucked, they can't kick you out. They don't do that, which is one of the great things about the festival is that they just go, yeah, thanks for the 500 bucks. Good luck selling tickets, cunt. And most people don't uh, because most people can't piss off enough people to cause a protest. One protest organiser, Tenzin Kangzar, said Spears' joke was disgusting and the crowd was there to tell the comedian what he has done is wrong. Well, I was there to tell the Dalai Lama that kissing a boy on the mouth was wrong. Uh, and he apologised for it, so he agrees with me. Sorry, guys. He made fun of our most special spiritual leader. He doesn't have Down syndrome, does he? They said he was special. <laughs> what was that noise? <laughs> he made fun of our most special spiritual leader and has hurt the sentiment of the Tibetan community in Melbourne deeply, Mr. Kangzar said. We demand an apology from Mr. Spears. You guys are going to be waiting a long time uh, because he has made fun of not just the current Dalai Lama, but also the whole institution of the Dalai Lama. That is true. I did, in my original joke, reference all 14 Dalai Lamas. That uh, What's that, a fucking combo? 14 po- times points multiplier. We demand an apology from Mr. Spears. Uh, Tibetan people have suffered enough under communist China. We came to Australia because we thought it was a multicultural country. Yeah, it is. And it's also a country where you get freedom of speech, okay? I understand that these... That's one of the horrible things about, the, about you know, this whole thing is I totally understand 
what the Tibetan people have gone through, especially the Tibetan, the Tibetan Buddhists. Like, they've been kicked out of their country for having a religious belief, which I think is disgusting. I think that's horrible that, that that's happened to them. But they've come to a con- country uh, that allows them to have any belief that they want. Uh, and one of the things they want to do is censor people from being able to criticize or make jokes about that belief. You can't have it both ways. You can't be stoked to be in a place where you're able to, you know, fly your flag literally without getting arrested, but then also try to cancel and shut down someone else for criticizing your belief. That's the price you pay of a free society is you're allowed to believe what you want, but you're going to hear people who, you know, disagree or might think that you're silly or, or might not even disagree or think you're silly, just poke fun at you because that's their fucking job. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's so ironic that they're like, Oh, you know, we've been kicked out of communist China who won't let us have our beliefs. And now we need to stop this guy from having his, um, uh, another woman who did not wish to be named, um, if it was a man, I would have just guessed Tenzin and 90% of the time I'd be right, said her people have suffered enough at the hands of oppressors. He cannot possibly know how deeply he has hurt our people. He has taken a knife to the heart of our spirituality. I mean, not really. I just told a few jokes. Like these, you know, these guys could learn a lot from fucking Catholics and Christians, huh? <laughs> have been the butt of everyone's fucking joke for the last 50 years. Uh, the Aussie comic says he is known for his dangerous material. He told the Herald Sun that while he never intended to make anyone cry or, or be genuinely offended, he would under no circumstances offer an apology to the Tibetan community in Melbourne. Uh, I told these jokes. I felt like they were well-researched about their culture and religion, and it went well in the room. It went well online, and then they found it. Now they're very upset, Spears said. No apology. Absolutely not. I stand by it. They're just jokes with no malice behind it. I don't want to hurt anyone or make anyone cry. That's true. Uh, But I can't control how people perceive my jokes. My intention is to make people laugh. Spears' website claims he is infamous for his confident, dark, and dangerous material. Uh, Here's an inside scoop. I wrote my website, so that's a claim by me. Uh, His stand-up comedy has been campaigned against by media professionals and earned him thousands of death threats. Club owner Maury Morgan, massive sick cunt, said he welcomed the group's pro- choice to protest outside his venue. He said, I think it's great. This is, this is such, a, this is such a, a real subtle burn from Maury Morgan here. I think it's great that Tibetans feel comfortable to protest. However, he added, the Rubber Chicken Comedy Club hosts a uh, monthly dark comedy special to ensure comedy is never censored. Uh, what a nice little write-up from, uh, what's her name? Grace Baldwin, lovely reporter, but I'm, I'm only going to give her a six out of 10 uh, for that article because there are, there are a few factual errors. That was not a silent protest and there were way more than 100 people there. Uh, but, they, but a lot of them were crying, so she gets points on that. Crying. Oh, he, he told a joke five days ago. Oh, yeah, look, I'm not apologising. And um, uh, before we get too, mu- too much into the protests, and we, we ha- I do have a, a lot more to say about it because it's very exciting. And I haven't, I haven't posted anything really since they happened. Um, I, I wanted to talk uh, a little bit about something that I learned from studying Buddhism while I was writing my joke. One of the, the, the characteristics, I would say, of Buddhism is reincarnation and coming back to life. And, and after one dies, they are reincarnated. Uh, and, uh, you know, death is, is a big part of everyone's life, obviously, and that's where everyone's life ends is with death. But Buddhism believes that with death comes rebirth, reincarnation. And um, someone very close to me died very recently. There was uh, my editor, Keelan, who was part of this show for a, for a long time. And he, he went to L.A., Los Angeles, uh, partly for tourism, mostly to torment the homeless there because it's... What was that one of the worst homeless problems in the world? And, and he saw that and his eyes lit up and he booked a flight directly to Skid Row. Um, in fact, I, I actually saw a video um, of him. There's in Skid Row. I didn't know this, right? Skid Row. It's like, it's imagine an entire suburb, like a big suburb where everyone on the street is homeless. But I didn't realize this, but of course this is true. There's people people with homes live in Skid Row and it's LA and these people have a lot of money. So you'll often see people, on the second story 
of their house and then the bottom story is like a garage. So I saw this fucking crazy video on TikTok, this is true, of like a garage opening and surrounding the garage is like a homeless camp. There's an open fire. There's people, you know, strung out on drugs and and homeless people everywhere. And this garage door opens and, and out comes like a really nice Audi like in front of all these homeless people and the homeless people there just knew the drill. Don't go in the garage or you'll get locked up. And these people with all of this fucking money are driving literally through this homeless camp with this house that could solve maybe four of those people's problems. Um, and, uh, and then standing in the, in the video was Keelan going, you see that guys, that's what happens when you're not a poor broke loser. Like you, you can get a car. Unlike you fucking broke homeless dorks. And he was laughing and pointing at them and saying, ha ha, it's your fault for being poor. And then the they the person driving the Audi wound down the window and high-fived him. Uh, and that was obviously the start to the video that a lot of us have seen on Live Leak, where Keelan was was quickly swarmed by the homeless people who he was taunting. Uh, and they, they brutally murdered him. Um, and a lot of... Uh, that's been obviously impacted the show a lot because we miss Keelan dearly and he was he was one of my closest friends until he passed. But studying Buddhism has has um has kind of given me a bit of light at the end of the tunnel of like with Keelan's death comes reincarnation. Um and and uh and I and not not a lot of people do know this, but Keelan was actually an avid Buddhist and he followed the Tala the Dalai Lama a lot. And and in fact, um he loved to kiss boys also. <laughs> What was that? Um, and uh, and because he was such an avid follower of Buddhism and followed the tenets and, and was such a monk, some people would say, he actually has been reincarnated. However, obviously with this religion, karma is a big thing that comes with it. And if you do good things, you get good karma and you get rewarded in your life, but you also get to be reincarnated as a higher being. So if you're a horrible person, a lot of people were messaging me, a lot of people were tens and were going, oh, you're going to come back as a bug or you're going to come back as like a, a snake or an eel or like some low creature. Um, because of Keelan's horrible behavior throughout his entire life, the abuse of the homeless, the parking and disabled spots, um, he was a terrible person in life, but he was an avid Buddhist. So he has been reincarnated, but unfortunately because he was such a horrible person, he has had to come back as himself. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and he's been reincarnated uh, today and he's back on the show. Hey, thank Welcome you. Welcome back to the show, Keelan. Thank you very much. How was the afterlife? Uh, it was fun. A lot of, wow! Did you meet anyone down terrible, there? Yeah, a lot of terrible people. Yeah, <laughs> was, it, was it hot down down there? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty warm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what many, many pitchforks? Uh, yes. Did, and did you hear any choirs or like people with wings flying around? <laughs> like feathered, like beautiful people in feathered wings. Was mm, there any of that? No, no none, none of, of that. None of that. But a lot of hot coal. A lot of hot coal. <laughs> a lot of black wings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. This guy named. Pell, I can't remember his first name. Yeah, G Pell, GP, yeah, something. General like that. practitioner. <laughs> yeah, Greg Paul was down there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, George Pell was down there. We hung out. We went used yep. to get beers together. Yeah. Um, How's he doing? Terribly. <laughs> <laughs> right, but you had a good time down there. I loved it down there. Wow. And uh, well, that's that's great. It's good. It's good that you're back. Yeah. Um, we actually have uh, in your absence. I don't know if you know this, but in the Discord, the Patreon only Discord, yeah. we actually because um, obviously you were missed a lot, yeah. which I didn't see coming at all. <laughs> uh, you were missed by by the listeners of the show, the Patreon supporters. So we actually constructed an AI language model. Oh, great. And gave it access to your Discord account. Oh, no. Uh, and and considering that uh, that I've uh, that I'm ruined and I've gone broke and I've lost everything. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I can't. Uh, afford to employ you to run your own Discord account. I was thinking of just letting the AI language yeah, model fine. just take over and continue to to post as you. Hasn't been saying anything racist, has it? Uh, it was yeah. because I just gave it a lot of uh, the conversations <laughs> that you and I had. So I everything that you'd ever said to me, I just fed into this machine. So yeah. obviously it was being very racist. Okay, um, but it, it uh, but I ended up uh, telling it to tone that down. 
Not because I think that's that's wrong, just because I, I don't want to violate Discord's terms of service. Yeah. Did you take all the conspiracy theories out as well? That's still in there. Okay. That's still in there because that's like that's borderline. So that's <laughs> that's fine. There's a lot there's a lot of stuff in there about nine eleven. It's actually mostly nine eleven. Um uh, how's my mum? I haven't told her that you're back yet. How's my family? Uh, well, I, I actually kind of think that it's that it's a little bit funny just to keep the truth that you've been reincarnated from them <laughs> as like a prank. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, t- I talk to your mum every now and then and, and, you know, she's, I mean, she's as good as a, a mother who's lost their, their only son can be. Is she happy? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's she's uh, you know what actually she's doing doing better than most. Which she was sad for a few days, but oh, okay. she she turned it around like suspiciously quick. Okay. Yeah. Right. She well, moved on. She's actually adopted a new kid <laughs> around your age. Okay. Yeah. So so in fact I would suggest that that she'd probably be better off if she never found out. Yeah, I won't reach out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So welcome to the show, guys. Um, I uh, I obviously uh, haven't done the show for a, for a couple of weeks. Uh, I I got very sick after the the festival. I barely managed to do the festival, as you guys know. I'm back, but I'm back as a sick man, so I'm just doing what I'm able to do. So now I don't have any shows uh, booked or anything like that. I uh, I'm able to return to the online stuff. I am toying with the idea of an encore show because of all of the protests and stuff. Um, but I was thinking of uh, making this episode uh, with Keelan because Keelan was reincarnated just in time to come to the protest show. Um, and, uh, geez, you must have been fucking disappointed when you woke up and you're like, I'm alive. And then you, you looked in the mirror and you're like, ah, I'm, uh, I'm me. I've come back as Keelan. Yeah. Well, oh, couldn't I have come back as a bug or. Yeah. <laughs> or someone <laughs> handsome. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't speak kinder about yourself. You're beautiful. Um, and uh, so Keelan was there for the protest. So I was thinking of uh, just kind of running you guys through the scenario from from my perspective and, and Keelan's perspective as well. So uh, obviously the, the, the video of the Dalai Lama came out, um, I, I think it was a couple of weeks ago now, where this, this 12-year-old boy goes, oh, can I have a hug? And he goes, yes. And the guy gives him a hug, but then he grabs him on the chin and kisses him on the mouth. And then he says, suck my tongue. And everyone got out- outraged by the suck my tongue thing, but I kind of noticed that as like I feel like that's either a joke or some kind of cultural thing that I'm missing. So I looked it up, and the, and the, the suck my tongue thing, it's like uh, from my understanding, it is like a Tibetan cultural thing that comes from a saying that I'm really really paraphrasing here, but it's it's essentially something like an, a parent or a grandparent will be like, I've given you my food. Uh, and I've given you this and I've given you everything. I don't have anything else to give you, so suck my tongue as like I would give you even that. So it's like a love thing. Um, so I actually didn't really have a problem with that. Everyone's focusing on that. I think it's fucking weird that the guy kissed the boy. Like that's to me is weird. I don't think an 87-year-old religious holy figure should be kissing boys and be free from scrutiny. And uh, a lot of the criticism that the Tibetan protesters were saying were – Oh, you're upset about the suck my tongue thing. I'm not. Okay, that's what most other people are upset about. I'm not. I understand the the, the there's a context behind that that we're missing. I get that. Uh, I just think it's weird to kiss boys when you're 87, mm. uh, and and that's it. Um, but they're all saying that, uh, and this this I think is fucking crazy. They're all going, oh, you're assigning sexual intentions to this man who who cannot have them because he's God, basically, or he is so holy that he can't have impure thoughts or anything like that. And, yeah, I am I just think that, I, man, I just think that that's a guy in a robe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I just think that's a, that's a fella in an orange dress. That's just some cobber, you know? That's some bloke in a, in a dress, and uh, you are free to have your belief and to, to believe that he's never had a bad thought in his life and the man's perfect. But, you know, I've seen a lot of money that he's taken from the CIA. <laughs> so at the very least, that was maybe misguided. So he's made one mistake. Could he make another? Yes. Also, he apologised for it. So, But his apology was strange. His apology it? was weird. He, he said... Uh, um, something along the lines of uh, the the boy asked for a hug um, and then they didn't mention the bit where he asked him to 
to, or, or he forced the boy to kiss him because he grabbed the boy by the chin, kissed him, and uh, and then then they go, oh, he's often playful and jokes around with people before cameras and off camera as well, yeah. which is just them going, oh, sorry that he kissed the boy, but don't worry, he does it all the time, which I've posted in my stand up bit by now or in a couple of days, mm. yeah, which is just like I don't know, it's just weird. Old religious people in positions of power should be heavily scrutinized with their behavior with children because as we've learned, giving these holy men that have risen so far above sinful desire, giving them the benefit of the doubt hasn't worked out for us very well in the Western world with our priests. And I and I don't think that there's never been a case of abuse in like any religion. Like there is no religion on earth that is free from abuse or violence or sexual violence. So we can't just assume, oh, that guy's fine. He's allowed to kiss boys because he wasn't thinking horny thoughts. How does the Dalai Lama get chosen? Um, so I be- I've only brief- looked this up briefly, but there's like a committee. So, oh, right. so the Dalai Lama dies yep. and then there's a committee and the, the, the current Dalai Lama, the fam. What's interesting is the family that he came from. He was born uh, on a farm on straw, like Jesus. Oh, yeah. uh, um, but from that family that he came from, they had they had like over ten children. I, I want to say sixteen, maybe it was less. Over ten children. Uh, more than a few of them have been like holy type special people from this one family. So you know. Um, good faith interpretation is that woman has a has a real holy pussy. Like she's just just pumping out saints. Mm. Bad faith interpretation is the committee was like, ah, it's around the corner. Yep. <laughs> Let's just go there again. <laughs> so, yeah, look, of course he's that's the fourteenth reincarnation of the Dalai Lama, and I believe it. But I don't I don't think that uh, yeah I just don't think that. Uh, anyone should be able to kiss children. And a, a big criticism that I'm getting from the fucking, from the Buddhists that I was getting heaps, right? Because I, I literally, quite literally, have tens of thousands of comments and messages. And that's not recording, but I hope you are. Um, I see your panic. There's no SD card in there. <laughs> okay, okay, um, yeah, calm down, everyone. It's all good. <laughs> as long as you don't stop that one, we'll be fine. This, see, this is this is why Keelan was reincarnated, to protect me from myself. <laughs> um and uh, yeah, a big major point of, of criticism that I'm getting is watch the full video. Watch the full video. You're watching like a censored, taken out of context version. So I did. And, and you know what? He still kisses the boy. And they're all going, oh, the boy was fine with it. <laughs> the boy was fine with it. I keep getting this message of the boy was fine with it. I'm like, so what are you saying? That children can consent? Mm. Is that what you're telling me that 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 they're fine with it? If the kid goes, oh no, all good. I I actually loved it. Then then the cops have to go. Well, you know, there's nothing we can do. You know, all those kids on Epstein's island. If they go, oh, we, that was actually fucking sick. Bill Gates is is a great lay. You know, they're gonna go. Oh well, yeah, let him go. They had fun. Wasn't that Michael Jackson's family's argument? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, the oh, the kids had fun. They all got houses. Yeah. <laughs> they got to go on his slide and meet his monkey and and meet his monkey. <laughs> meet bubbles and blow bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. But literally, I'm getting that so often of, oh, the boy was fine with it and the boy's family was fine with it. It's like, oh, okay, so as long as mum and dad sign a release form, it's all good. It's like when I go to school camp. Yes, we understand he might break his arm on the on the flying fox. He can go to school camp. <laughs> it's like that's that's uh, it's like no, it's okay. The parents were fine with it. Oh, okay. Well then they then I, that shuts down the trafficking industry, doesn't it? As long as there's a an adult there signing a release form, we can't do anything about it. For fuck's sake. So I understand, I understand why the why this, why those Tibetan Buddhists are upset. I think that they've obviously been through a lot as a people, and it's it's horrible what they've been through. And I and I don't discredit that. That's real. Like the persecution that Tibetan Buddhists have faced is like horrific and very real. 
brief overview is China believes that Tibet is part of China. Tibet believes they're a country. It's like Taiwan. It's like, no, we're actually a country. And then China goes, actually, you're China. China doesn't want any powerful people in, in their country that isn't them, obviously. So they don't want a Dalai Lama. Or if there's going to be a Dalai Lama, they want to choose who it is, which obviously would just be some Chinese puppet if they got to choose it. Um, so a lot of these people that are in Australia... They're refugees or children of refugees that have been kicked out of China for having these beliefs, which is which I understand. So I understand why they're upset. Uh, I think that I think that for for them, because they've only ever been able to yell at organizations, you know, like oh, at China and at persecution and like these like very big concepts, they finally like found a person that they can go fuck that guy. That actual person, it's like for them, I represent all of this stuff and they've put all of this other horrible trauma that they've been through and they've put it on, they've lumped me, me in with it and they've inferred a lot from what I've said. You know, I'm getting a lot of like, you're, you're a Chinese agent and you hate Tibet and, and you're pro-China and you're being paid by the CCP and I, and I, and I just think it's weird to kiss boys. <laughs> That's all. I don't, I don't think about anything else other than ah oh, that was a bit fucked i every every show in the morning i would check the news and i would write a joke about what was happening in the news that happened in the news that's it that's all i haven't i haven't thought any deeper than that uh until now ironically you know they're all going oh don't like that joke was not part of my show that was part of one show yeah. and i posted it and when i post a joke generally it never gets done again um uh, but then they protested, so I'm like, well, fuck, I have to write 15 minutes on this. And that is what I will be posting now uh, in the video I've got coming up and, and a stand-up clip too. Clad, it also didn't go very well the, yes. for the first like week. How funny is that? So the, the stand-up bit, look, I, I, th I thought it was funny, but it's not my best work. Like, I know that. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, yeah, it went, it went well in the room. I put it out online because it was like a good way to promo my show because it was something that I would never say again, so I thought. And it got, I think it got like twenty to, to 30,000 views on Insta, which is not very good for me for a stand-up clip. And then it stayed that way for like five days. So I was like, ah, oh, bummer. I thought this one would go a little bit better, but whatever. <laughs> At least people know I'm doing shows every night. And then uh, after one day, like overnight, it just rocketed up. I think it's up like 120,000. So it's like every fucking Tibetan Buddhist in Australia has seen it. And, and dude, talk about a bad view to like ratio. That thing sucks. <laughs> 120,000 views. I think it has like 2,000 likes and then like 7,000 comments. <laughs> and on my analytics, you probably can't see this, Gillen, it has 20,000 shares. <laughs> so it's just going into every fucking family group chat in Tibet. Dude. I was getting so an unbelievable amount of threats and no one believed me. Like no one was like, even the comedy festival, they reached out to me because the, the Tibetan Buddhists, they, they wrote an open letter calling for my cancellation and the comedy festival is pretty good. They didn't do anything. They just forwarded it on to me. They were like, just like, Hey Lewis, just so you know, this is what's happening. And I just said, yes, yeah, sorry. Your emails are probably getting flooded. Um, and uh, so obviously they're not, they did, they did not cancel me. Uh, it would, in fact, we'll get into that a little bit later. It's very funny. Um, and uh, then eventually I was like, hey, so uh, just so you know, I'm getting a fuckload of death threats. Like, do you guys have a process for this? Because I know that this happened more recently, a couple of weeks before, happened to a, uh, a performer called Ruben K. Basically the exact same controversy, different leader. He told a joke about Jesus on the project that I thought was really funny. It was something, he's gay, Ruben, not Jesus. Uh, Ruben's gay. And he said something like, uh, I, I, can, I, 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 uh, I love a man who can get nailed for three days straight um, and, uh, and something, something. Um, basically a joke about gay sex. And uh, that went super viral. The project ended up apologizing for it because they're cowards. Uh, and he ended up getting protested and a lot of controversy. And I, I imagine he got even more death threats than I did. Um, because Buddhists are Buddhists and Christians are different. <laughs> um, and so I was like, hey, do you guys have like a duty of care if, if one of your acts is getting death threats and all this kind of stuff? Because I'm not so worried about so, so worried about that for me because it doesn't scare me. I had a whole comedy special about this. Um, but uh, it's, it's also like, well, if I'm getting death threats, it'll be like the, the new young 
female comic next that does tells a joke that goes viral that pisses people off. So I feel like there should be a process if one of your acts is getting threatened. You know, I gave you guys 500 bucks. What are you guys doing? And they said uh, nothing. Uh, but but if there are de- if there are death threats, we'll uh, uh, send them to us. Which felt a little bit like we don't believe you. So then I just sent them like 150. I just screenshotted it, like real real specific ones. Like I'm gonna be there at 7:30 April 15 with a gun type shit. Real specific ones. And then uh, and then anyway, unbeknownst to me, they forwarded those on to the police. And at every single show since the protest, there were undercover police at my show, which is really exciting. Isn't that fun? Mm. Really exciting. Well, so you could tell. You could tell who they were. Yeah, 100%. It was like three it was like three guys that looked like dads, no kids. Yeah. Big uh, beefy guys. Big huge dudes <laughs> all wearing the same boots, standing as far away as possible from anyone brown. <laughs> like you could just tell. But what a good gig. You know, you want to be a police officer, you got to go see the comedian. That would be fun the first night, and then you got to go five nights in a row. Oh, he's this dickhead telling jokes again. Uh, and, and also, I think uh, during the show, I'll post this in the clip, but I said uh, I, I was talking about the undercover police <laughs> at the shows on stage, which they wouldn't have appreciated. I said, you'll be able to no, you'll be able to tell who they are. They're the guys that are only laughing at the racist jokes, uh, which uh, which I thought was very funny. But but upon reflection, would probably would have not worked in my favor if the stage got rushed. <laughs> Um, can I mention about the Ruben K thing? I'll allow it. Um, Fergus Neal has a great podcast, Breaking Down the Outrage. Oh, really? And I think it's just like a... a Where's my episode? Fergus? Well, hmm? I, he'll do one with you. I've yep. been trying to line it up. Oh, oh, without my consent? Yeah. Wow. Sorry. That's why you've come back as you, man. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to line something up for you, yeah. but uh, his, his podcast about the Ruben K thing is really interesting. Yeah, that's cool. I have to listen to that. I Actually, on Ruben K... Just a couple of days ago, he had to cancel a show in Bri- in Sydney yep. because of uh, of threats and protests. And I think that's fucking crazy that we're now having religious freaks dictate who and who cannot perform. Mm. That's f- like wh- what era have we stepped into? Is this like this is like fucking the seventies again, where they were having like the the Satan scare. And all this kind of shit. So he cancelled a big show in Sydney because yeah. of, I assume, because of threats. He wasn't very, he was very uh, tight with details and stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, and and that comes down to often a performer never wants to cancel a show. It's usually the venue, uh, and that's why I have so much respect for the Rubber Chicken and Mori who runs it because you know the morning before the protest. Let's break down what happened. So I I, I put out this video. Five days after it goes out, it rockets up 100,000 views. I'm getting death threats, all this kind of stuff. I think it's funny. Uh, I have six shows left to promote, so I Photoshop myself as a kid on the Dalai Lama's lap with all of my dates, which is basically like, uh, hey, come get me. (laughs) Upon reflection, that was, come get me, guys. Um, And so they would have picked one of those dates and protested. I think it was the day after I posted that thing that they had the protest. So I think I post, I believe I posted it on Monday. They were there Tuesday night. Um, And so Tuesday morning, I get a call from the venue owner and he never calls me. So I'm like, hello. And he goes, hey, Lewis, the police are here. I went, oh, fuck. I'm thinking the place has been vandalized. There's spray paint. I'm thinking, oh my God. And I go, what's happened? And he goes, oh, there's going to be a protest. I'm like, what? And at this point, I'm like, I have no idea who... Like literally, I think I posted a joke about um, a trans person and that went quite well. That one got like 70,000. So I'm thinking, oh man, and there was just a trans protest. So I'm thinking, oh, it might be about that. Um, But the trans people were very happy with that joke uh, that I posted. Um, It was the Buddhists that were upset. So I'm like, he goes, "The, the Buddhists are protesting. I'm like, the Buddhists? And he goes, yes, the Buddhists. I'm like, oh my God. So we kind of, uh, I immediately call up uh, Keelan, who'd just been reincarnated, and uh, and I go, hey man, sorry to hear that you're back, um, but uh, let's let's drive in tonight because yeah. normally I've been taking the tram in, uh, but I thought I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to keep this as peaceful as possible. Uh, so I put out a video telling my my fans to you know just keep away from these people and and not instigate uh, and keep it all peaceful because you know it's 
it's their right to protest. I'm not I'm not mad at it. In fact, it's it's great promo for me, obviously. Uh, so we go, uh, we go there and we, we aim to get there at, I'm like, we need to get there at five because the protest starts at six. Uh, Keelan and I are very late. We get there about 6.30, <laughs> <laughs> of course. And so the, the protest is all there. It's about, maybe it's about a hundred people at this point, but it's, it was getting bigger by the minute. And we, we drive past and we see this big protest and then we get stuck at the fucking lights <laughs> right next to the protest. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Go, go, go. And Kill's like, the light's red. I'm like, run the red, man. They're going to throw shit at your car. I'm thinking that the car's going to get swarmed. We, we park next to it. All these people start coming up to the window. I'm like, fucking go. He's like, I can't go. I'll get a fine. I said, I'll pay it. Go. <laughs> And that they come to the window and they're looking in and they're looking at me and I'm like, oh man, this is this, say goodbye to Keelan's rear vision mirror. It's over. <laughs> and they just start waving in the window at me and pointing at their signs like, hey, this is what we're protesting. And and I realized it was like I reckon ten people saw me. No one has any idea who I am. They don't know me. Mm. So so I'm like, do these either these people have just rocked up? They're going, oh, here's this protest of the week. We're protesting this guy. They haven't even fucking watched the video. They don't know what they're angry about. Or all white people look the same. It's probably a mixture of both. The The vibe of the protest was very much church group. Mm. Like local church. This is what we're doing this week, guys. Come on down. Yeah. Community event. It was a community event. There were there were women and young children there, which I didn't like. Young kids. They were there till like 8, 8.30. And there were like kids under 10 there. And the kids were angry. Holding signs and angry, and it's like, yeah. what are you doing? Wait, who's bringing children to a protest? It's yeah. strange behavior. Um, lucky for them, the Dalai Lama wasn't there. <laughs> oh, they're not going to be happy with this episode. <laughs> um, so, anyway, they didn't recognize us. So we we drive around the corner, and they're standing out front of the venue, and. Um, we have to sneak in and we, we managed, we found a, a secret entrance into the rubber chicken, which we won't say where it is, but we managed to sneak in. They didn't see us. And I go upstairs and dude, by the time, like I kind of got settled, it was like maybe seven, seven thirty, And that's when the protest was at its biggest. There's like 200 people there. And the chanting was so fucking loud. It was unbelievably loud. It was like, Lewis Spears, not funny. We demand apology. What do we want? Apology. When do we want it? Now. All of that stuff for for like uh, two hours from 6pm, they were chanting this stuff and dude, I felt so bad for the shows on before me because at the Rubber Chicken, there were three shows a night. It was one at 6.30, one at 7.30 and then me at 8.30. They fucked up the end of 6.30 show they ruined all of 7.30 show. A, a Japanese guy called Kenta, um, I felt so sorry for him. I profusely apologized to him. He thought it was funny. In fact, I caught a little bit of his show. It was hilarious. He kept opening the window and bashing <laughs> on the window because we're upstairs. So he pulled back the curtains and bash on the window, antagonizing them and pissing them off. Very funny stuff. Uh, they probably looking at him going, oh, one of us is up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's Japanese, much bigger people. Um, and, uh, so I felt so sorry for them. They completely disrupted their show. And I'm thinking, oh man, this is going to really like really fuck my show. Like the noise. Cause I'm thinking it'll be funny for about 10 minutes. And then I've got 50 more minutes trying to perform over yelling. I'm thinking this is good. This is going to ruin my show. Um, unbeknownst to me, uh, downstairs, it was complete, it completely fucked this live music downstairs and it completely. <laughs> Completely fucked it. Like, I felt so bad. Because the protest is for me, and it, I reckon they ruined seven performances that night. <laughs> they, they fucked the music downstairs. No one, no one behind the bar could hear what was being ordered. There was a fuckload of security and police there, mm. and and uh, people weren't going into the venue because it looked scary. So Because it's a pub, right? Not everyone is there for my show. In fact, most people are not there for my show. Mm. The embarrassing thing about the protest is they actually protested the poorest selling night of the entire run. <laughs> So I sold really well across the run. I need to preface this with I sold very well. 
I sold a lot of tickets. I sold 1,300 tickets. That's a lot, right? But on this night, I had only sold 30. <laughs> it was 30 people. It was the, the poorest selling night of the entire run. So there were uh, six times more protesters than there were audience members at my show. And ironically, the final week wasn't looking that strong with sales. But because of the protest, they all rocketed up. I sold out the entire final week because of the protest. Uh, but it was just so funny that they picked the poorest selling night, which is why I think they didn't they didn't realize that I was in the venue because you didn't see my audience go in because they came in in twos and threes. And after 15 groups of two, they were fucking in. And they were like, oh, they, they couldn't possibly have been a show tonight. There wasn't enough people in the audience. <laughs> Which made it quite scary for the people. I think also a few people did not come because yes. I, I posted in the morning. I was like, hey, I wanted to give fair warning. Like, there's going to be a protest. Because if people have panic attacks or anxiety disorders or, 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 or you know autism or whatever the fuck you've got, you don't really want to be confronted with, you're an evil person. You're horrible. They Go were, home. <laughs> there were six no-shows. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a lot. That's he that's like a massive percentage of the crowd. Yeah, we, we, even when we the have like the crowd. when we're sold up like uh, 110, we'll have maybe one or two people don't turn up or yeah. one person comes late. 6 out of 30 didn't come. <laughs> that's a fifth of the audience. Yeah. That's cuz I scanned everyone in and yeah. I I waited like 5 minutes. Yeah. And I was like, I guess they're not coming. That is so funny. Yeah. I thought it looked smaller than 30. Um, let's talk about inviting Rafi in. Oh, yeah. So uh, Keelan uh, has uh, uh, has allowed himself to have one friend who is not white. <laughs> and I think it's wrong, but he's, he's, he's adamant I only want one. I can only bear with one of them. That's what, and that's, those are his words, not mine. He goes, I'll, I only want one of them around. And and it, the, really the friendship was started because of me because I said, come on, you got to – it looks weird, man. Like you can't just – only have like straight white male friends you have to open up a little bit and he said fine but i'm not going to be nice to him <laughs> so i found this guy with real low standards for himself when it comes to friends called rafi uh who is asian and a devout muslim <clears throat> so it's kind of two for one and uh and because he's asian he's good with technology we put a camera in his hands <laughs> He's never touched a camera in his life, but because it had buttons and a screen, he just worked it out. And, and he's even better than Keelan. Uh, and, and so Keelan begrudgingly has accepted this guy as a friend, but it's mostly so he can force him to do work uh, that Keelan kind of should be doing. But because the guy is Asian, he does work for less than most people. Um, so that's Rafi, our Asian camera guy. Yep. And, uh, and we, we invited him. I've been friends with Rafi for 10 years. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> Sorry, the reincarnation is a few memory bugs. <laughs> Trying to fucking gaslight me in the audience here. Um, <coughs> uh, so we get Rafi because Keelan was kind of there to film the show and to film me. But then we were like, oh, what if stuff happens downstairs? So we decided to get another guy uh, who... Uh, Ha happily blended in quite well with the mm. protesters because um, Keelan we sent you down a few times to get a few shots Yeah. and what was the reception for you like? Well I'm a white man and I'm twice the size of anyone there so. Tibetans are quite small They're, I would say the tallest one was maybe 5'5 five five. Yeah I stood out and um, they were all very nice but they were the, the leader especially was a bit aggressive yes. towards me being there and they weren't chuffed with someone taking photos or videos of them Yeah 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 yeah, and there was one woman standing in the doorway who would scream at you every time you walked in, and I was walking in and out. What and was she saying? And like, what? Because I, I I didn't get to experience. that. I can't remember. There's video of it because yeah. I just started filming her because it was very funny. Because <laughs> she's anyone who came in, she would scream in their face. That's awesome. It's pretty confronting if yeah. you're not expecting it. Yeah. Um, maybe that was maybe uh, those six people tried to come in, <laughs> but they were screamed home. Yeah, I think one guy, as I was walking in, or I heard it at least, um, just started yelling back at her, and yeah. she was like, "You wouldn't, you wouldn't like it if I made fun of your mother." And he was like, "Go ahead, yeah, I don't care." That's a real cultural divide. There is, I was getting a lot of that of like, "How would you feel if I made fun of your family?" I said, "Can't come see my show. Like <laughs> half of it's about mum. <laughs> Literally, if you saw my show this year, a lot of it was about my mum. So, come along." 
Um, I, so I'm during the protest. There's about 200 <laughs> people there. They're all chanting. I'm standing yep. kind of in the middle, but towards the back. Mm. Um, and the police had had a word to me to not antagonize anyone. Mm. So that's fine. I called Rafi. He came down. He doesn't live far away. And he walks in with his camera and he just starts taking photos and they're all like patting him on the back and like, (laughs) no way, really? And they're all like, so happy he's there. (laughs) Mm. Because they must think he's Tibetan. Yeah. And That's so funny. And then he sees me, comes over to me. We like, we like hug or whatever. And then I saw this, the look of someone, and they were like angry. They're like, <laughs> "Oh, we've been betrayed." <laughs> and I saw this this cop who was standing on the side oh started God. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that happened. Yeah. That's so funny. So we had an inside agent, an inside Asian. <laughs> um, that's so good. So yeah, Rafi was there, and um, so this protest is happening. So I've I got there at like six thirty, and I've listened to at like an hour and a half, almost two hours, right? Because my show starts at eight thirty. Two hours of people chanting, "You're not funny," <laughs> which for the first ten minutes it was very funny, it was very exciting, but then it started to psych me out a little bit. I was like, "No, I think I am very funny." Um, now, honestly, it was um, it was a little bit scary. It was exciting. It was a little bit scary. It was funny. It was it was adrenaline. It was great. I loved it. Um, you know, being able to like stick my head out the window and have two hundred people go, ah! you know, that's really good. That's like some Monty Python stuff. Yeah. Um, I just I just wanted to go. He's not the Messiah. He's a very old man. <laughs> <laughs> He's not the Messiah. He kisses boys. Um, but I wouldn't do that. We're at forty-seven minutes. Oh, we only have 55 minutes to do this. Um, and, uh, okay, so the my show's about to start, okay? We're setting up the cameras. Uh, we've had our fun. I, the Herald Sun girl came upstairs, interviewed her, interviewed me, and she went and published the article like 15 minutes after, uh, said it was a silent protest, whatever. Six out of ten, good job, Grace. Then uh, it's my t- the, the show on before me finishes. It's my turn to start. We start a little bit late, and... It's sitting up the cameras, and I that's the first time I've been able to sit on stage. And the stage is right next to the windows, which are right next to the protesters downstairs on the on the ground. And it is deafening. It is so loud. When I was in the bar, I was like, I can perform like this. When I was on stage, I was like, this is really gonna put me off. This is not very good. <coughs> and um then just when we're about to open the doors, it goes completely silent. And we haven't heard silence since we got there. And the silence was way scarier. We just hear 200 people start to cheer going, yeah, woohoo, yeah, ringing bells and 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 clapping and cheering. And I'm like, oh, my God, what the fuck's happening? And then it goes completely silent. I'm like, okay, they've stormed the venue. This is it. It's all over. It's 30 against 200. Sorry, 24 against 200. Six no-shows. <laughs> Cowards. Um, and... Uh, it goes silent and Keelan doesn't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, <laughs> fuck. I, the silence was so scary. I was like, oh my God, what the fuck has happened? Cause there were no sirens. It's not like they got moved on. It was cheering and then dead silence after chanting for two fucking hours. So I'm freaked out. And then we just go, oh my God, we can't figure out what's going on. We have to start the show. Cause we'd already started quite late because of all of this. So I do my show and I start talking. The show goes great. People are like, People feel the same as me. They're excited. They think it's funny. It's a little bit scary. It's it's just like, oh, my God, I was at the protest show. Um, I do the show. It goes great. I meet everyone afterwards. I, By the way, for the whole two hours while I'm upstairs, I'm, I'm on, like, hypervigilance, high alert, looking at every single person that is coming up the stairs because a few people tried to storm in. Like, they tried to – you can see it on the news report. Six men come in looking for me and they have violent intentions and the bar owner and the police are like arguing with them, trying to kick them out. And they're just like scanning the bar downstairs looking for me. Pretty scary stuff. Um, So every person that's coming up the stairs, I'm, I'm checking them out and it feels super racist because I'm looking for a type of person like uh, Rafi came up the stairs. I almost booted him back down (laughs) again. Um, And uh, uh, which Keelan was excited about, Uh, but uh, so the show dead silence throughout the entire show. It wasn't disrupted at all in any way. And then I finished my show. I meet everyone afterwards. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? And then Keelan goes, I have something to tell you, but we have to film it. And this is on camera. And uh, 
so what happened, Keelan? So the protesters kept calling the rubber chicken mm. and the musician on at the time was getting really frustrated with all the phone calls interrupting his Every set. five minutes a yep. phone, the phone would ring. And so someone working at the bar was fed up with it, walks over, picks up the phone and goes, Lewis has cancelled his show, you win. <laughs> Go home. And then we've got this on camera, they all start cheering. <laughs> And they all start cheering. They all go, we did it. We cancelled the show. We, yes, we've done it. And they all went home. And after all of that noise, they got there at, they got there at 6 p.m. All of that noise, all of that chanting, they ruined three music performances. They ruined two comedy shows. And the one guy they were there to protest got to do the entire show without any interruption to silence. The only noise I heard was the jubilation and the laughter of my audience. <laughs> Checkmate Buddhists. So fucking embarrassing. I honestly, honest to God, honest to the Dalai Lama, I feel sorry for them. How embarrassing. They went, because I, I don't know I don't know where this community lives primarily, but I can't imagine it was close. Yeah. I can't imagine it was in the CBD, in, the, in fucking penthouse apartments, you know? Yeah. They would have travelled a long time to get there and they would have gone a long way home and they would have been patting themselves on the back and, yeah, we did it, we've done it, amazing. All that night I was getting messages on messages on messages because they went home and they all post. They've got a real big social media community. They all posted it everywhere. I was getting thousands of messages and comments going, ha ha, we win. We got your show canceled all day, all night and all the next day. And then I was posting a few things. Uh, I wasn't confirming or denying if the show was canceled because I found it quite funny. And they were saying, don't pretend that your show didn't cancel, you cow. And they were, they thought... My, like my show was cancelled, like the next six as well, which is why there weren't any other protests I figured out because I thought there was going to be one at every show, but they thought they had cancelled every single one of my shows. That's so funny. So, and then I, and then I ended up posting this video and dude, of, of me actually performing that night and the fucking rage and vitriol and death threats that I got in my DMs just skyrocketed. I feel bad for them, man. Yeah. Um, very silly of them to do. So sold naive. me way more tickets. It's so it's naive. Like that's what that, that this whole thing uh, has really just made me go. Oh, these are just like quite naive mm. people. Like I I I feel sorry for them. Um, and I'm and and I think that that ultimately w where I'd like to end this podcast is I'm not your enemy. I'm not the enemy of Buddhists or Tibetan people. I'm just a comedian. I'm telling jokes. I think it's weird when old men kiss boys. That's it. That there's no deeper thought or meaning behind it and uh and i'm not going to apologize because i know my intentions were pure um you know just as you know your guys kiss was pure and non-sexual at all i know my jokes weren't uh weren't you know meant to offend or to hurt feelings or to denigrate or to be racist or anything like that they were just jokes uh, and uh, no protest is going to stop me doing what I'm doing. Uh, in fact, it's just going to make me sell more tickets, and we're organizing an encore show as we speak. So uh, thank you to everyone who came out to the shows and to the comedy festival. It was one of my favorite runs that I've ever had, and congratulations, everyone. We got our first protest. How exciting. And who would have thought it was from Buddhists? I for sure thought it would be Christians or trans people or or vegans or like any any other group I would have put before Buddhists. Yeah. But it was the Buddhists. But, you know, respect to them. They put their fucking money where their mouth is. You can go for five more minutes. Oh, great. Excellent. Um, if you want. Well, yeah, that, that's true. Do I want to? <laughs> um, I was trying to think if there's anything else that, I, that, I'm, that I'm missing. Um, oh, that, that was a funny thing. Um, for the rest of the five shows, I was just monitoring who was buying tickets because we see the names. <laughs> And I was looking at the names that were buying tickets and there was one name that freaked me out. There was a guy called Peng Shui that came to Saturday Night Show and it was a single ticket and it was right after the news hit. Peng Shui bought one ticket and I was like, man, if because if anyone named Tenzin bought a ticket, Insta cancel. You're not coming, right? I can do that. But Peng Shui, it's a, I looked it up, it's a Mandarin name. With Mandarins, they speak in China, and they also speak uh, in, uh, in in Tibet as well. They speak that language. And I uh, was like, well, this is one of two people. This is either a Tibetan Buddhist that's going to try and rush the stage and kill me, like some lone wolf actor, or 
it's like a Chinese national guy that fucking hates Buddhists. It's only one of those two people. And neither of those two people I particularly want at my show, but I can't, I'm not going to go cancelling people's tickets based on suspected belief, based on what name they have, which is, let's be real, just racism. <laughs> you know, so I was like, oh, well, I'm just going to have to be hyper vigilant on Saturday. And with you and me, uh, and and uh, Phoebe was there. And Rafi. And, and Rafi was there, because uh, I, I forced Keelan to bring him in the Keelan really didn't want him to come. Um, we're sitting at the at the back, and I'm going. Just keep a lookout for anyone who looks Tibetan. We might we might have one, maybe. And at, right as I'm saying that, up the stairs walks the most Chinese looking <laughs> motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. Just the most Chinese guy ever. He's got the spiked up, you know, uh, fucking accountant hair. He's wearing like a, a brown vest and a button up shirt. He's got a little sling bag. And we all see him. We all have a look at the guy and we all look at each other and go, yeah, we're all right. It's fine. It's it's the it's the Chinese guy that doesn't like Buddhists. He speaks no English and yeah. he has a Huawei phone. Yeah, one hundred percent. He only uses he doesn't use TikTok. He uses fucking Douyin. Oh, that wasn't an assumption. That was true. He didn't speak English and he did have a Huawei. Really? Yes, I wasn't lying about that. <laughs> Fuck! I should have talked to him. Maybe that was the CCP agent. I could have got some money. I could have given him a fucking invoice. Dude, that that's uh. Yeah, fuck. That's so funny. I, look, to be clear, I don't want people like that at my show. Yeah. Chinese people. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't, hey. yeah. Uh, I'm assuming a lot about this guy. Maybe he was just a maybe he's just a fan of comedy, but but I would imagine if he didn't speak any English, you know, maybe he was just a, a, a fan of what he perceived me to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I think to wrap up, you should talk yeah. about when we all went out for dinner with Rafi and made him pay. Oh yeah, then we went out. Then we went out to dinner. We went to Chinatown. Uh, Uncle Whitey was there. Yeah, Uncle Whitey was there, and uh, and we went out to dinner. We went to um, uh, Ling Nan, which is a, which is uh, a place that I can only describe. We go there all the time. I've been going there since 2012. Ling Nan, Chinatown, amazing food, absolutely horrific service, <laughs> but service that is so bad that it's quite funny. So I always take people there because I love seeing people's reaction of how fucking rude the service staff are every time. And uh, we go there and uh, Rafi's there. And as a big joke, we all walk out when it's time <laughs> to pay every single one of us. And and by the way, Rafi was there thinking that he'd be unpaid for, for that, that work that he just did. Uh, so he's thinking he's not going to get paid. Uh, and then we all make him pay for dinner. And that was a really good one. That was great. Keelan loved that until until we all decided to pay him back. Yeah. He was like, no, he deserves it. And we said, <laughs> why? And you said, you know. Um, which I thought was was pretty bad of Keelan. But and Rafi was really upset. He gets in the Uber and he's like, I didn't get paid for work and then you made me pay for dinner. <laughs> we ended up, I ended up paying for it for the work and then I ended up paying him back for dinner. But it was <laughs> it was a great hour and a half where we let him believe that well, I just got him to work for free and pay for my dinner and the dinner of all of my friends. That's a really good one. If you ever go out with someone who's new to the friendship group, it's just fucking make them pay <laughs> and, and make them sit and soak for an hour and a half. That they they think they've just wasted. It was like a hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> uh, it's all it's a it's a great little test to see uh, the power of peer pressure. Um, we're gonna end it there, guys. Thank you very much for listening. I'm gonna be back next Sunday. Uh, Keelan's gonna be on and off the podcast as he has availability and as he wants to. Uh, and if you but if you really want to talk to him, he's gonna be available 24 seven 365 uh, in the Discord on Patreon as an AI language model. We've recalibrated and recreated his personality. Uh, it's it's just as terrible as you remember, and it's in the Discord uh, for Patreon supporters. There's a Patreon uh, exclusive episode that comes out every single week, yes. and I will talk to you guys next Sunday. There's a big video about all of this coming out soon, or it's already out, and I've got on-call shows coming soon. Thank you. I'm back. I'm feeling good, and uh, well done, everybody. I'll see you next Sunday. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.